Hey gang, Jack Lair here. Uh, I know, new video from me, rare sight these days. Uh, things have been really crazy in my life, and uh, as all of us know, real life takes precedence over uh, everything else. Uh, but I had to kind of chime in, or at least I don't, I, I feel that there is a conversation being had, and I want to be part of it. And it's all about all the things that happened at E3. Now, the, the, the big things is, let's get this out of the way, is the, the hardware. And the hardware looks great, uh, Xbox One, uh, stupid name, but, you know, we have the Dreamcast and the Wii and the the Master System, and the Genesis. We've had stupid names forever. We have the Atari Jaguar and the Atari Lynx, and pretty much everybody but Sony. Sony's just kind of gone PlayStation. Carry on. Uh, but we do have the Vita, so I uh, The names aside, um, by the way, don't ask me why I'm drinking coffee uh, this late at night in the Texas heat. Um, but I really think that the two consoles are taking uh, really different approaches, and uh, for me, now, preface this, I'm coming down on the side of Sony, uh, just like I did last generation. I don't like shooters, particularly, and that's one of the things that Microsoft is pretty much built on. Um, I like the first... Th I liked the first Fable, the second Fable was abysmal, and then from there it just kind of eh, went down the line. Assassin's Creed, don't care about it, really don't care. And it's the, it's the games that I haven't seen before. Those are the ones I want to play, and those are the ones that Sony showed me. Now I know a lot of those are not PlayStation exclusives, so I also know that uh, a lot of those are going to be coming to Xbox One. So why the PlayStation 4? One, Microsoft has just not done a good job of telling us why. They've they've done a good job. Well, that's, they're doing a good job of telling us why, they're not doing a good job of showing us why. And it hit me during the, uh, during the, the PlayStation uh, E3 press conference is that there was a little vignette where it showed people playing games and how it would work and flipping over to videos and downloading this game and buying this on your phone and it showed me that. Now, if Microsoft, rather than saying, well, you have to be always connected online, and you have to, uh, you can share it with uh, this many of your friends, and they have to be your Xbox friends, and if they had simply shown me a video showing someone, like, playing a game, and then getting a, a Skype call, and it says, hey, dude, do you want to come over? I was like, yeah, I'll be right over. Going over somebody else's house, and the Xbox, like, him sitting down in front of the Xbox and it picking up his face and going, Great, hey, I know you. You're Jack Allaire. Great, let me log in. By the way, this is your friend's house. You've got access to all your library. What do you want to download? Now, that would be a piss poor demo because if we actually watched it, like, okay, great, you want to download this 25 gig game? Play it at your friends? Great. We'll be back in a little while. Yeah, it would take forever. But, it's that promise that's there. But Microsoft is not, they're not showing that. And it drives me nuts because... It's, it's like someone reading all of the bad things about a food first was like, oh, this is high in cholesterol, and this has a bajillion calories. Uh, do you want it? Like, well, no. Like, oh, well, it's ice cream, so I'll eat it. You know, whatever the case may be, it's, it's the fact that that conversation is not happening. Now, uh, Xbox One, uh, 
just forgot the name of the game. The game with the mechs and the running and the wall jumping and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, Titanfall. That game looks amazing. I like that. I will probably never play it because I don't care about... I'm sorry. I don't care about Halo anymore. We're on Halo 5. We're on Assassin's Creed 4. I, had to, I don't care. Now, so the, the, the games that, that personally I was sitting down and going, what? Wait, come back, come, come back here. Uh, Nintendo's games, uh, as, as always, uh, Nintendo is doing the same things they always do, which is... It's one of those things that I know they're good at it, they know they're good at it, but it would be nice to see somebody do something. Like Ninja Gaiden Z! Holy crap! Where did... Where did that come from? I was like, well, we're gonna, we're gonna just... We're gonna make a cyborg, and we're gonna go balls out in this other direction. Kudos. Because you know what? That's what... That's what we need, is that we need, we need the crazy back. I have, I have a game around here, I don't think I can find it. I have a game called Irritating Stick. Irritating Stick. That was a game. I have Wild Nine. I have all kinds of crazy games that, they have no right to be made. But we're finally to the point again where the, the, there are guys sitting around, or people, just sitting around going, well, you know what? We've got, we've got four of us. What can we make? Well, I think we can make this uh, 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 weird little game about a ball that uh, it rolls around and we're trying to get back to the playground. And they're like, okay, well, what? Well, we need a phys we need physics and we, we can do this in, you know, whatever. And they find, and, and they can do it. And now people are finally to the point where they're like, you know what, I kind of, I liked Marvel Madness, and no one's really made a game like that. Yeah, I, I do want to, I do want to be a little ball rolling around. Be, here, 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 what, 20 bucks Kickstarter? Here you go. So I like the fact that there are little games that are popping up everywhere. And I know I'm rambling, or waffling, as uh, some of us call it. Microsoft was telling me how excited I should be about their games. Sony was excited to tell me about their games. Because, I'm, I'm sorry, but whoever was on... And this, this may be just me, because I'm old, but whoever was the MC at the Microsoft press conference, I, just, he, he looks like a prick. And he's like, yeah, it was really groundbreaking and blah blah. And you know what? I'm we're you know what? We're tired of PR. We're tired of PR. If you tell us one more that well, we feel that the evolutionary gameplay will be indicative of the coming generations, and the the consumer will find that no, no, no. I'm not a consumer. I'm a person. I'm a gamer. I'm I do these things because I like them. So I know I was real angry, but it was I spent all of E3 watching uh, Giant Bomb. So for those of you who don't know who Giant Bomb is, uh, Jeff Gershman, Ryan Davis, Brad Shoemaker, Alex Navarro. Now I'm, my brain just stopped. Patrick Klepek, uh, Vinny, Drew, the whole crew there, and every guest that they had on. So I got to see behind the scenes. And you know what? Some of the people who make games. They are freaking hilarious! Drake cracks me up every time I see him. Uh, John Vignocchi was cracking me up there. 
um, everybody that they had on, and they got to show like the 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 face behind that. They they sat down with Cliff and Blazinski, and like he was just you know he's like you know what right I'm I've been doing this since I was a kid, and I'm just I'm gonna sit and wait for the dust to settle, which is honest. And then Jonathan Blow was like, well, you know what, I'm an engineer, so here's the things that I think here. And it was fun to see that intern, the, the, them to like, oh, drop their mask and just be like, yeah, these are the things that we want to do, and we wanted to do this, and we wanted to do that. And they got to the bottom of a lot of things, and there were two different... Two different interviews from two different people. Uh, one was uh, Patrick Klepek did both of them. One is Patrick uh, asking questions of a dude from Sony. And I forget his name, and I'm sorry. But he's sitting there, and he's like, well, oh, dude, they're like, whoa, that's a weird question. I, I, I don't know. You know, I, and he would, like, turn and look to the other guy, and the other guy's like, well, yeah, I don't know, but I can get you the answer in a little bit. And they would just go back and forth about that. And then he did another interview with a guy from Nintendo. And he gave the most wooden answers, like, well, we feel that the franchise moving forward is, is, uh, and I can't remember what it was, but it was something about, like, we move, feel that the something, something moving forward is all about games, and that's what we, that's what we did today, and we're going to show our games so that People will buy the system so that then third parties will like it. And Nintendo's strategy for, for E3 2013 was really to deliver the messages to different audiences in, in the ways they wanted to hear about it. A couple of examples of that is we did the business partner presentation for retailers and publishers and analysts, and we really spoke to them about marketing, about business practices, and about ways we were going to move the business. But he kept... You know, like, well, hey, you know, I've got some questions here from, from the fans. And they're like, hey, well, you know, what, what, what's the future of Metroid? And he's like, well, we're not discussing any plans about Metroid right now. I was like, well, what, is, is Retro working on anything? I was like, well, we're not discussing any of the other projects. He's like, shut up. I'm asking you questions. Just... You know what it is? It's, it's that role-playing game where you're like, you, you've just had this great great cutscene and it's like oh you're like yes I am I am uh, by the way I just got done playing both witchers back to back so it's like ah, I am Geralt of Rivia yes okay well I gotta go you know what I gotta go to the store and then every time you talk to the store you'll be like well good to see you again it's like yeah I was just here I just I need another by my stuff and it takes you out of like it's like you weren't a human being anymore you're an NPC and a crappy eth oh my god guys imagine this okay someone 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 anyone anyone listening an e3 video game not not a video game at e3 but a video game set in e3 where you have to wander around, get interviews with different game makers, and you're trying to like scoop the other guys. Oh, I love it! I love it! Someone make it, because I don't know how. Um, but anyway, so I did play the, the Witchers. Um, but back to E3. For my birthday slash Christmas, I'm gonna get a PS4. The Xbox One, I, they've, Microsoft really has to get out there and show me something. Because it has, it's, it is the tale of last generation this time. And I don't, I don't know if Microsoft just didn't look at how bad Sony biffed. Where they came out and said, well, we believe that people will be getting second jobs to buy our console for $600. And whereas Xbox was like, Xbox was over there like, ah, we gotta sell these things. How do we? We gotta price them low. We gotta give them all kinds of different things. And and uh, I don't 
don't know. The type of person that I am, it's... I, I, I want the games that I haven't seen before. Or the games that I haven't seen in a really long time. And... I watched some demos, by the way, I'll watch the Thief demo. Please be good, please be good. It, it looked rough, but it looked fun. From, I watched, because I watched some of the, I watched gameplay, because Patrick, Patrick Klebeck from Giant Bomb, went and saw it, and all I kept hearing was negative from him. And he was like, it is not good, it's not ready. And I watched the demo, and I'm like, all right, I can see where, from a critical perspective, you would be like, okay, this is not, this is not up to the par that I would call a $60 game. Right now, it's about, it's about a $30 game. And you know what? If it stays at that level, fine. I'll wait until it goes on sales and, and pay $30 for it. Be done. But it looked, it had enough of a promise that I am, I'm on board. And a lot of the games were like that. But a lot of the main ones that everybody was like, oh, no. Call of Duty, I don't care. Don't care. Battlefield, don't care. Gran Turismo, don't care. Forza, don't care. And I, I, Burnout Paradise, I still play it. Bring me another Burnout. Until then, I'm pretty much out. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Saints Row the, Saints Row 4! Oh my god. I watched that, sorry. I watched that demo, and, uh, I watched like the, the the opening trailer and then I just watched some of the gameplay and I watched the dubstep gun. Oh my god, the dubstep gun. It is just like the way Saints Row the Third was described is that there is not a point in that game except for a few missions there at the very end where the, and they were side missions optional. But there is not a point where you are not having fun. Whereas you're walking along. Yeah. I'm walking along, I'll take off all my clothes so I get the streaking bonus. Sure, why not? Hitting people upside the head with a, a giant uh, purple dildo bat? Sure, why not? Rocket launchers? Sure. Mega Man cannon arm? Sure. A combat tank from like the old brr, brr, brr. Sure, why not? Go for it. Light cycle? Sure. They, they just... There was a there was a, a an old movie and I can't remember what it is, but it's about a bunch of mental patients, and I think Dudley Moore is in it. I might be thinking of the wrong movie, but there are a bunch of there are a bunch of uh, mental patients, and they start coming up with pitches for products, and I I feel that that's what's happened for the guys that are working on Saints Row is that they've just they have just like, what would be, it would be really cool if you were the president and you got attacked by aliens and you had a giant artillery gun that had the presidential seal on the back of the chair. That would be awesome, right? And everybody's like, well, yeah, that needs to be in a video game. That's what they're doing. And I love it. They're they're insane! Because you know that on paper, if you wrote like, uh, well, yes, we're going to have a, a, a third-person uh, open-world game. Uh, it's going to have some shooting, uh, some uh, uh, giant uh, uh, phallic melee weapons, and... Uh, wait, what, what, what? I'm sorry? Oh, we're going to have uh, another guy that talks uh, entirely in uh, auto-tune. Wait, that's, that, that, that sounds dumb. Well, yes, but it's, 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 it's the right kind of dumb. And that's, that's, I think that's, that's the right, ah, oh, that, God, it's the tagline for Saints Row, is that it's the right kind of dumb. Like, I, 
from the time I started playing Saints Row the Third, because I was, uh, I played Saints Row ages ago, and I was like, all right, whatever. Played Saints Row the Second, and I was like, uh, why? What is going on here? Because I didn't get it at that point. Saints Row the Third was the first time where I actually like just. From the time I started playing, I was like, I had this grin the entire time. And I would just, I would stop playing the game and I would just be laughing so hard. My wife would be like, what's going on? I'm like, I jumped out of a plane, parachuted and jumped back in. Why would you do that? I'm like, I don't, because it's awesome. That's why. That's what I miss about the... I think that the generation running so long did a great disservice, but a great boon at the same time. Because we got one, two, three, four, wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, five Assassin's Creed games on the same console. Unless I'm missing one, which I might be. There was one, two, Brotherhood, the other one, and three. I think that's five, but... I, I don't know. I think I'm running out of steam, so I'm gonna... sign off for now. Uh, go ahead and leave uh, comments if you disagree with me, agree with me. Uh, something that I didn't talk about that you want to hear me talk about from E3, uh, want to know what I was thinking about, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Uh, I'll keep checking them. Uh, I do have uh, more uh, Xenosaga waiting in the wings, just things have been crazy busy. Uh, I've also got, uh, I'm revisiting some uh, other old games along the way. Uh, but yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I do appreciate that. And as always, play on. Whatever system you want. At least this is how it feels to me. Microsoft spent a lot of time telling us uh, how, how nice their penis is and how everybody will love their penis and uh, how it's, 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 it's fun for everyone and it's amazing and groundbreaking and Zony just walked in, flopped theirs on the table and went, ah? Ah?